50 more, I gotta get for that. So. So. Good evening and welcome to the uh, board meeting and we're glad you're here tonight and we're going to go ahead and call it to order and adopt the agenda for this evening. Um, do I hear a motion for that? So moved. So moved by Ms. Cobb, second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. All right. And then we're going to approve the uh, minutes from the regular board meeting on February 25th. Do I hear a motion for that? So moved. So moved by Ms. Lyons, second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion? All in favor. Mr. Chester, do you have a discussion? We've got a motion or a second. Go ahead. That is, uh, that is down on item eight when we come back from executive session. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. At this point, we're going to go ahead and, and um, take a motion to adjourn to executive session. We'll discuss the minutes um, from February 25th. That'll be the only vote that's taken. Uh, discuss personnel, uh, student discipline, and legal. Do I hear a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Albright. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. We're adjourned to executive session. Good evening and welcome to the March 10th, 2020 meeting of our uh, Fulton County Board of Education. We have already convened at 5 p.m. and and then uh, closed the, the session and went into executive session. And now we're going to go ahead and reconvene. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and call the regular board meeting to order. And we'll start with our invocation and pledge uh, tonight. Uh, the invocation will be uh, led by Pastor Wayne Meadows of Poplar Springs Baptist Church. If you were here, go ahead and make your way to the podium. And then that will be followed by the uh, presentation of our colors from the Paulding County High School JROTC. If everyone would please stand. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, our Father Almighty, I come before you this evening with thanksgiving for this day and for the blessings of life. And I ask now for your blessings upon this occasion and all those who have gathered and all those who will have a part. May you give your presence among us. Lord, your word teaches us that the fear of you is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. So may we be wise. And I thank you for the perfect display of wisdom that you've shown us in your son, Jesus Christ. And in his name, I ask tonight for your blessings upon our children. I pray for their safety physically. I pray for their well-being emotionally, their success intellectually, and their wholeness spiritually. May you keep the evil one far from them. Guard, O oh Lord, the campuses and classrooms that they attend. Grant their administrators and teachers wisdom, compassion, and skill. Bless these board members with all that would be needed and required to faithfully accomplish their task. And Father, I ask that in every community across our county that peace may abound. Help us, O oh Lord, to love you and love our neighbors. And may the model of love that you've shown in your son, Jesus Christ, compel us. For it's in his name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
the code. Freeze that. Arms. Order. Arms. Post. Okay, one point of information here um, from the from the uh, just for the school board and for the public. On Tuesday, March the third, twenty twenty, Mr. Jason Anavatardi, District Six, formally qualified, or he formally qualified for another public office, and will not fulfill the remainder of his term. According to the BOE policy um, that we have, board uh, to fill a, a board member's unexpired term. The Paulding County Board of Education is now charged with appointing a qualified person to serve the remainder of the unexpired term, uh, which will end December 30th, 2022. Um, in compliance with the BOE policy, a vacancy announcement will run legal uh, in the uh, county newspaper, which is the Dallas New Era. The uh, following dates for uh, the newspaper ad will be March the 12th, March the 19th, and March the 26th. We've also posted on our website uh, the fact that we're taking applications. Uh, the Paulding County Board of Education, uh, in response to the resignation of uh, Mr. Anna Vitardi, uh, we're currently accepting those resumes. Um, and that will be, the deadline will be 5 p.m. on March the 31st, uh, 2020. Uh, you can either hand deliver those here to the central office or email those um, to uh, Ms. Taylor. And um, all this information is, is here and it's also on our website. And it has been shared with um, with some different social media outlets and so forth. Um, and let me just go through the, uh, the, the the requirements for interested applicants real quick. Uh, you must be a resident of Georgia, uh, must be at least 18 years of age, minimum of 12 months of residency in the county and school board district in which the individual is seeking office uh, for 12 months prior to the election or the appointment. Um, you cannot be employed by or serving on the governing body of a private educational institution. Uh, not having immediate family members sitting on the local board of education or serving as the local school superintendent or as principal, assistant principal, system administrative staff in the local school system. Not employed by the Georgia Department of Education, not employed by the board of education the individual is serving on, not holding another county office, not holding or receiving public money that's refused to or failed to account for it, for it or pay for it when asked, uh, not having a felony conviction that has not been pardoned and is not the subject of a restoration of rights, must be of sound mind and able to discharge the duties of the office, not being a publisher of school books, an agent of school book publishers, or someone with financial interest in the sale of school books, or any other restrictions set forth in Georgia Rule OCGA 20-2-51. Um, again, the application process you have until 5 p.m. on Friday, March the 31st. Uh, the school board, we will have a called meeting on April the 14th at 8.30 a.m. 
um, to uh, to review the applications. Does any any board members have any questions? Okay. Ms. I was going to say one thing, and I may have overlooked it, but I was looking. I did have people had asked me questions about the map, and I know that's on the county website, but I was I was unable to find it on, or not easily find it on our website. So if we could make, I'll add that to the to the posting itself. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, this time I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Dr. Otot for the superintendent report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, several things going on in the district. I uh, always like to start with the good things that are going on. I know several of our board members were at the Chamber First Thursday Forum last week where our Paulding College and Career Academy presented basically kind of a status report of where they are. Um, I really felt that it gave our chamber and our community a great idea of what's going on. But I will tell you, as I noted in, in my report here, really the highlight of the presentation was Nate Wallace, who's a student in the Power Pathway, who uh, really talked about his experiences in the Paulding College and Career Academy and the impact that it's had on them. I'd also like to take this as an opportunity to just remind our community that the Paulding College Career Academy um, is always looking for additional students to join our ranks. It's a phenomenal program. There's a great deal of information available on the website. But again, if, uh, if you have not and you have a high school student, either currently or next year, uh, please take a look at the College and Career Academy. It's a great opportunity. Also, Saturday was an amazing event. The Northwest Georgia Science Olympiad took place. It was hosted at Paulding County High School. I believe there's 13 schools that participated, um, most of those from Paulding County, but also from neighboring communities as well, Rome City and Polk County. Um, this was just an awesome event, over 250 kids. And we filled a gym talking about science and they were able to actually demonstrate their proficiency around of a number of different activities from an egg drop to also things dealing with uh, actually space and, and our universe. So it was a great uh, event, but I would like to give a special congratulations to Shelton Elementary who took place uh, first place of the entire event. Uh, Abney Elementary took second place, Dallas Elementary third, and Hutchinson Elementary placed fourth place. But I will tell you, it was just really awesome to see Paulding County High School gym full of adults and students who were there to talk and be a part of a science day. That was just really exciting. Also, uh, we were able to announce our district employees of the year this week, and I'd like to take a moment to recognize them by name tonight. They will also be honored at our annual star banquet on May 5th. That's where we also recognize our teachers of the year. For transportation, we have Lois Swafford, who's a driver. From nutrition, Brenda Enyart, who's a nutrition training specialist at the Diane Wright Innovation Center. Our school leadership category is Libby Bell, who's principal of Russum Elementary School. Our school instructional support is Christy Chapelier as a parapro at PB Rich Middle School. Our district support is Chad Seabury, who is in our technology department. Maintenance operation custodial services and facilities, that category goes to James Mathis, who is an electrician in our maintenance department. And our school support services is Amber McDonald, who is a school nurse at Herschel Jones Middle School. So I'd like to take a moment to uh, recognize these employees uh, to this crowd, whoever is, might be watching, and know that we'll have a very special celebration for them, uh, just uh, appreciating them on May 5th. Um, moving on into district news, parent-teacher conference week is next week. That means all schools dismiss two hours early for parent-teacher conferences. Also, uh, to our board, we have scheduled to host an off-site meeting on May the 12th, and that will be at Sammy McClure Middle School. And we'll, of course, post that to our website as that will be a change in venue. As I've done for the last as many weeks as I can remember here, a reminder to our community that there is a budget survey feedback form on our website that gives you all an opportunity to provide us uh, your thoughts and feedback about our upcoming FY21 budget. Uh, we're in several weeks of having this up. I believe in our last report, we had approximately 350 respondents. That is still open and I encourage our community to take a moment and give us your feedback concerning budget. Uh, the last thing I have is we have extended the application window for the first class of the Hiram Academy of Computer Science. Um, this is a school of choice option that will focus on computer science. Information is available on our website as well as the Hiram High School website. And we're excited to be opening that next year for our first class of ninth graders. And again, this is a choice program, meaning that students from other high schools can attend. 
Uh, just a real quick couple of events. We have Elementary Honors Chorus Saturday, March 14th at East Paulding High School, and that starts at 4 p.m. Our Paulding College and Career Academy Car Show will be Saturday, March 21st at the New Hope Education Center from 10 to 2. All proceeds to benefit the PCCA. And of course, our next board meeting is Tuesday, March 24th here at the district office at 8.30. Um, I did speak uh, with the chairman prior to the meeting, and I do have some additional information that I would like to share with our community. And that's something that, of course, is in the news, and that's uh, COVID-19 or uh, the coronavirus. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our first slide here. And this slide is actually taken directly from the Georgia Department of Public Health website and information they're sending us. And I want to assure the community that we are working closely with our local health department as well as Georgia Public Health in helping us manage and stay informed on the spread and also just what's happening in terms of uh, COVID-19. But from this website, it says, we're gonna give some schools advice or give schools advice. And I wanna let you know there's check marks next to those because we have accomplished all those actually, quite honestly, prior to um, this coming to our shores. But we have reviewed and updated it and are prepared to implement, implement our emergency operations plan. We'll continue to communicate with school staff and parents about measures to prevent the illness, having a flu shot, the importance of hand washing, covering coughs, sneezing with a tissue. And most importantly, um, that I'd like to share tonight as a reminder, if you're sick, if you're an employee or a student, stay home from school. And that is guidance we would give any day. Um, I know I'm surrounded in the back by teachers, former principals, former district office staff. If you're not feeling well, school's not the place to be. I also want our board to know um, that we've ensured that there is communications posted in all of our schools around proper hand washing techniques, as well as these very simple things that can help keep you safe. We're continuing to monitor to attendance um, is for students, faculty, and staff. And uh, we, uh, of course, have plans to deal with that if absenteeism becomes an issue. We have established procedures for students and staff who become sick at school or arrive sick at sc to school. And uh, of course, we continue to perform routine cleaning as well as a serious focus on high touch areas at school during the school day. So what's in high touch area? That's a doorknob, that's a water fountain. We're making sure our daytime staff is tending to those during the day, but we're also readdressing those areas at night when cleaning takes place. But what I'd really like to focus on is what we're doing, because on top of what the Department of Public Health recommends, our district has been very vigilant in making sure that we're prepared. And that includes creating a cross-departmental COVID-19 task force. We actually meet every morning at 8.30 um, just to discuss what's happening in our community and of course make plans as we need. We've reviewed our continuation of operations plan and as many districts, if you watch the news, all school districts have a plan um, concerning pandemic. We are monitoring and following those plans and also discussing scenarios that may arise in the district. Um, we're proud that we have regular communication with public health and also our public safety uh, partners. I talked with Sheriff Gulledge today. I talked with Chairman Carmichael today. Know that we're in communication about what's happening in Paulding County. We have created an informational website that we update almost daily. And if there's one place I can tell you, you will have the most current information about what's happening in Paulding is through our website. Again, we update that nearly daily, but it has not only what we're doing, but also just good documentation from the CDC and Department of Public Health. We send letters um, to our both parents. We sent a letter actually almost two weeks ago to our community about COVID-19. We've updated our staff. We provided guidance to our principals. Um, concerning COVID-19. We've hung those hygiene flyers that I referenced earlier in our schools, and also regular school cleaning with commercial, commercial virus, virus protectant spray. Um, and again, these are the things that we're doing that we wanna make you aware of. I also wanted to take a second, just briefly, to share some other information that's on our website because um, we get frequent questions about this. So no, we have guidance for folks who may have traveled outside of our country um, or from other areas in terms of how they should communicate with our school district. This is all again on our website. 
and available for your review, but in terms of enrolling students from identified high risk areas. Now, when we talk about high risk areas right now, we're talking about those level three and four. Those are gonna be your China, uh, Italy, South Korea, and Iran. Um, basically, we're requesting that those parents, of course, communicate with us. We have what's called central registration in Paulding County. You also need to know that students don't directly report to schools when they're new to our district. They go to our central registration center. And if there are questions about where someone might have traveled from, we're able to actually deal with that at point of registration. Also, we have guidance on here for reentry of students traveling to high risk areas. We also have just general guidance about student travel as well as staff travel. Now that should be communicated. So to our Board of Education, our community, I just wanted to provide you a brief update and let you know that this is something that we're constantly monitoring and working with because um, student health and safety is our primary concern. And again, just wanted to take this opportunity. So if the board has any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Mr. Albright. Uh, I just want to say that uh, <clears throat> to Mr. Otot, to the entire administration uh, of, the, of the district, all the way down to uh, you know, principals, teachers, janitors, and, and everybody. Uh, the response uh, by the district as a whole has been, uh, ha has been remarkable. Uh, you guys have taken on this challenge and you've taken it, on, and you've taken it head on. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate all of the extra hard work and everything that has gone into this. Uh, this was uh, this was something above and beyond the already extremely busy schedules that everybody already had uh, that this is now taken on and uh, you and your team from top to bottom have done a fantastic job and you should be commended for that thank y'all well, thank you very much I would like to give a special uh, recognition to our our lead nurse Christy Kennedy um, we value so much our school nurses and the role that they play in our schools. But she has been an all-star um, along with our team and just really want to publicly thank her for all of her hard work as well. All right. Um, we'll move into recognitions next. Uh, this is our favorite part of the program, but I would like to make our community aware that the week of March 16th through 20th is School Board Appreciation Week in Georgia. Um, of course, our school board here, and as I just told a, a, a gathering of administrators and other staff, how much we sincerely on behalf of our staff appreciate our Board of Education. Um, I can tell you by working with these folks on a daily basis that they truly have a heart for children because you don't become a school board member if you don't care about kids. Um, it is a calling just like it is to be an educator and the people that surround me up here uh, I want to first of all thank you, but sometimes we wanted to take a minute to share with the community some of the things that you do that go unheralded. So, Michelle, if you go ahead, we put a little video together for you guys today. to become the 12th largest school district in Georgia, who guided and supported the renewal of our SPLOS program, bringing in more than $113 million over the next five years to build new classrooms, make facility improvements, and pay off debt. Who approved more than $1 million in safety enhancements for our district, including safety officers, access control systems, and alert notification systems, and much, much more. Who approved adding prevention intervention to our district and supported social emotional learning and mental health initiatives? Who has approved budgets that provide support and benefits for Paulding's largest workforce? Who funded technology initiatives, including infrastructure upgrades, new equipment, and staffing? Who approved a major investment to expand and improve our services for students with special needs? who supported academic initiatives in literacy and math, who brought innovative opportunities for students such as the Paulding College and Career Academy, Hiram Academy of Computer Science, STEM instruction in all of our schools, capturing kids' hearts, and other initiatives that have boosted student performance across our district. 
It's our Paulding County Board of Education. And on behalf of our over 30,500 students and over 3,600 employees, we'd like to take this moment to thank you for your commitment to our students and community. You continually support our mission to engage, inspire, and prepare our students, and that overall vision of this district, which is to prepare all students for success today and tomorrow. So from our community, from this office, from our schools, we just like to take this moment to say thank you and let you know how much we appreciate you do each and every day for our students. Thank you. And from all of us, I would just, you are a very humble group of people up here, but just know that your efforts each and every day for our 30,500 students are sincerely appreciated. And I sincerely appreciate your willingness to work with me and support those kids. So thank you so much. All right, there we go. Thank you all very, very much. Um, this, as we discuss, is our favorite part of the meeting. That's where we get to recognize students in our district um, who do so much to uh, really make this a great place to live, uh, work, and learn. So with that being said, Ms. Katie Anderson, if you wanna come forward, we'll begin our recognitions tonight. Dr. Otot, tonight we are excited for our recognition time to include our Yes, our, yes I Can winners, Fine Arts in Action, All State Band and Chorus members, as well as Character in Action, Pennies for Paulding winners, and our Winter Sports uh, Athletes of the Year. Earlier, our students were able to meet with Dr. Otot and our board members for a special photo session. It was a wonderful time for these students to meet our superintendent and our board members, spend a little bit of time talking about their successes. And now we're excited to publicly recognize these students. Please wait to leave the boardroom until after all recognitions are complete. We will begin with the Yes I Can Award winners. The Yes I Can Awards celebrate the achievements of children and youth with exceptionalities. These students seek their highest potential and increase public awareness of their abilities, their aspirations, and personal qualities of those with disabilities. Tonight we are recognizing our high school award winners from 2019. From North Paulding High School, we have Emily Little. Emily is not here this evening, but I'm going to tell you about her. During the 2018-2019 year, Emily took an active role in participating in CTAE events and finding options to help her be successful in her post-secondary plan. So we're very proud of her. From Hiram High School, we have Daniel Hamilton. Daniel is an amazing young man. He comes into class every day with such a positive attitude and an outlook on life. He never gives up, and he is the hardest worker that his teacher says she has ever met. It's not just Daniel's academics that blow her away, but his kind and gentle heart. He has shown that he genuinely cares about what's going on in the lives of others. Way to go, Daniel. <laughs> From North Paulding High School, we have Jeremiah Wheeler. And Jeremiah is also not with us this evening, but in 2019, he was recognized with the Yes I Can Award for excellent growth in the area of math. His determination, attention to detail, and perseverance has been his recipe for success. He shows up for class every morning, eager and ready to face every challenge in which he is presented. He defines what it means to be a student by always trying, so we're very proud of him. From Sal Paulding High School, we have Michaela Dixon. Ms. Michaela continually seeks learning opportunities outside of school. She frequently researches hands-on activities at home that supports what she is learning at school, and she shares with her peers and teachers. Her enthusiasm to learn is evident in all of her classes. Way to go, Michaela. 
And I want to say that this year, our Yes I Can Awards will take place on Tuesday, May 5th at 5.30 p.m. at Hiram High School in the theater. And we'd love to have everyone there to join us in celebrating our students' accomplishments from this year, the 2019-2020 school year. So let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs> And now our students are going to greet the board. Up next, we are pleased to present our character and action winners. Each month, students are chosen by the teachers and or administration of their schools as excellent representatives of positive character at school. This month, we will recognize students for the character trait of tolerance, which was our character word for the month of February. Tolerance is defined as the ability or willingness to tolerate something. In particular, the existence of opinions or behaviors, perhaps, that one does not necessarily agree with. And the capacity to endure continued subjection to something without adverse reaction. From Bagot Elementary, we have James Freeman. James exhibits heightened levels of tolerance as he is required to adjust to a classroom of students with dynamic personalities that alter the environment, sometimes daily. James continues to stretch himself to become more tolerant to schedule changes, new academic goals, and even <laughs> tolerating frustrations he may feel when he's asked to perform tasks outside of his comfort zone. James is an inspiration to our class and most recently to our student body with his contributions to the morning announcements each day. Way to go, James. <laughs> from Hiram High School, or I apologize, from Hiram Elementary School, we have Zoe Duncan. Zoe is a fifth grader and loves every single person in her class, her grade level, and her school unconditionally. She accepts every student for who they are. Zoe is a very caring person who will reach out to any student if she thinks she can help them. She is also forgiving in that even when someone has wronged her, she's mature enough to turn around and help that person when they are in need. Our entire class loves Zoe and her heart. She is well deserving of representing our school for tolerance. Way to go, Miss Zoe. <laughs> From Panther Elementary School, we have Jordan Lawrence. Jordan is in the third grade and is a great example of a student who exhibits tolerance. She has the ability to work with anyone in a group or with a partner in the assignment no matter what the circumstances. She tolerates all personalities and behavior in a calm and very mature nature. Way to go, Zoe. I mean, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. From Austin Middle School, we have Lily Watson. Lily is an eighth grader and represents the idea of tolerance because she works hard inside and outside of the classroom. She's kind, friendly, dedicated student, and she pushes herself and others to excel. Inside the classroom, she's the student who can work in any group or with any person. In the hallways, Lily is friendly to everyone. She has a smile that can be encouraging and upbeat, and her teacher says, I find her to have a positive attitude and a desire to complete all her work with excellence. If students aren't working, she encourages them to focus because she wants to complete her work too. I think Lily is a great example of tolerance. Way to go, Lily. From Dobbins Middle School, we have Christian Dudley. 
And Christian is not with us, but we're still going to brag. Christian is an eighth grader and is very patient with other students. He's an easygoing attitude with peers and classmates, and he does not judge nor put down other students for their differences, and we're very proud of him. From Hiram High School, we have Kennedy Crossling. <laughs> Kennedy is a 10th grader and is described by her teachers as kind and gentle. When she's in the classroom setting with students of different learning levels, she's patient, she's understanding, and she's dedicated to kindness, always willing to share a warm smile. So we're very proud of all of these students. Let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs> and we're gonna greet the board, starting here with Mr. Up next, we are so excited to recognize our fine arts students with the 2020 Allstate Chorus and Band members. First, we will recognize students for Allstate Chorus. From Austin Middle School, we have Miss Gracie Ward. Gracie is in the eighth grade and sings soprano. Her director of choral activities at Austin Middle School is Miss Shelley Patrick. Way to go, Gracie. From Dobbins Middle School, we have Wally Kulabali. <laughs> Wally is in the seventh grade and is a tenor, and the director of choral activities at Dobbins Middle School is Miss Sandy Adams. Good job, Wally. <laughs> From Moses Middle School, we have Morgan Mann. Morgan is in the seventh grade and is a soprano. We also, from Moses Middle School, have Dorothy Dennard. <laughs> Dorothy is an eighth grader and is an alto. And also from Moses Middle School, we have Tegan Lanham. <laughs> who is not here, but Tegan is an eighth grader and is a soprano. The director of choral activities at Moses Middle School is Miss Kelly Townsend. From South Paulding Middle School, we have Tiffany Warnock. <laughs> Tiffany is not here. She is in the eighth grade and is a soprano and the director of choral activities for South Paulding Middle School is Miss Amelia Culkin. From East Paulding High School, we have Connor Hamilton, who is also not here. He is an 11th grader and a tenor. The director of choral activities at East Paulding High School is Miss Michelle Lockhorst. From Hiram High School, we have Maya Jordan. <laughs> Maya is an 11th grader and is an alto. Also from Hiram High School, we have Luke Moser who is, Luke is not here, but is a 12th grader and a tenor. We also have Ethan Orridge from Hiram High School. <laughs> Ethan, otherwise known as Shrek, is a 12th grader and is a bass. Way to go, Ethan. There were two other Hiram High School students, and I'm going to tell you their names. They are in rehearsal tonight at um, a local theater in town where they're performing. So Caleb Quinn, who is a 12th grader and a tenor, and Zephaniah Wages, who is also in the 12th grade and a tenor. The director of choral activities at Hiram High School is Miss Ashley Poole. Way to go, guys. <laughs> From South Paulding High School, we have Miss Sydney Godfrey. Sydney is a senior and is an alto. The director of choral activities from South Paulding High School is Miss Cindy Richardson. <laughs> At this time, our choral students will greet the board.
And now we will recognize our students for All-State Band. From East Paulding High School, we have a student who is not here, but I'm going to tell you about him. Evan Weaver is a 10th grader playing the oboe. The director of bands at East Paulding High School is Mr. Michael Thomas, and the assistant band director is Mr. Josh Robichaud. From Hiram High School, we have Carlos Sanchez. Carlos is a 10th grader and plays the French horn. The director of bands for Hiram High School is Dr. Adrian Gibson, and the assistant band director is Mr. Mitchell Roberts. Way to go, Carlos. We have a North Paulding um, student who is not here tonight, but I'm going to tell you about her. Um, Madison Clevenger. Madison Clevenger is involved heavily in all of the activities in her school, and there was a conflict this evening. She's in the 12th grade and plays the clarinet. The director of bands for North Paulding High School is Mr. Teddy Mack, and the assistant band director is Mr. Joseph Stevens. From South Paulding High School, we have Michael Martin. Michael is an 11th grader and plays the tuba. Way to go, Michael. Also from South Paulding High School, we have Macy Henson. Macy is an 11th grader and plays the clarinet. Way to go, Macy. And also from uh, South Paulding High School, we have Nate Baker. Nate is a 10th grader and plays the trombone, and Nate was the first chair trombone for all state band for the state of Georgia. Way to go. <laughs> the director of bands for South Paulding High School is Mr. DJ McConnell, and the assistant band director is Miss Bethany Green. Thank you so much to those, to all the directors. Way to go, students. And now we're going to greet our board. Let's come this way in a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Up next, we are going to recognize the schools that raise the most money for Pennies for Paulding Fund Drive. Pennies for Paulding is a fundraiser which raises money for Hope for Christmas. Hope for Christmas is an organization which provides food, toys, and clothing for over 2,000 economically disadvantaged families right here in Paulding County. There's a middle school and a high school category, and then we split our elementary schools into four categories depending on the student population. Then there is an overall winner for the entire county, regardless of level. And our very own Miss Kathy Hamilton, counselor from Shelton Elementary, organizes the fundraiser through the Paulding Schools and assists in getting all of these funds from the schools to the community host for the Hope for Christmas location right here in our county. Miss Hamilton, if you'll stand and let us thank you for all of your work with this program. Now, for this year's winners, so the schools are spread around in the room, but if the principal and the representative that is with the school will also stand when I call your name. Elementary Category 1, we have Poole Elementary with Miss Rachel Tate and Dr. Paul Chafee. <laughs> Elementary Category Number 2, we have Roberts Elementary with Paul Wilder and Giselle Neal. And I apologize, I should say, Paul Wilder is the principal at, Pan at Roberts Elementary and Poole Elementary, Dr. Chafee is the principal. From elementary category number three, from Dugan Elementary, we have Principal Deanna Byers and Amy Ellison. <laughs> elementary category number four, Burnt Hickory Elementary, we have Dr. Joy Vinus, who's the principal, and Tia Smith. Thank you. 
our middle school winner, McClure Middle School Principal Janeth Hayes. From Paulding County High School, the high school winner, we have uh, Mr. Tim Plumley. Our overall county winner is she Shelton Elementary School with Principal Dr. Jeff Robinson and Miss Kathy Hamilton. Up next, we're excited to recognize our Winter Athletes of the Year with basketball, wrestling, and swimming. Our Girls Basketball Player of the Year is Taylor Cullinan from North Paulding High School. <laughs> Taylor's coach is Mr. Scott Green. Taylor is a 6'3 guard forward, class of 2021. Taylor helped lead the Lady Wolf Pack to a record-setting season with 19 wins and a Sweet 16 appearance in the state tournament for the first time in school history. Taylor was named All-Region as a sophomore and junior in one of the toughest regions in the state. She averaged 11 points and nine rebounds for a game for the season per game for this season. Taylor averaged 15 points per game in county games versus Hiram and East Paulding. Taylor currently has eight division one offers for basketball. Taylor's coach is Mr. Scott Green and he was voted district coach of the year by his peers. Let's give it up for us. Our boys basketball player of the year is DeAndre Brown from Hiram High School. DeAndre Brown is a basketball senior at Hiram High. He has done well on and off the court in leading our basketball team with his leadership. He's earned first team award for Class 5A Region 7 this year and runner-up for Player of the Year as well. DeAndre averaged 19 points per game, four rebounds, five assists, and three steals per game. He has been a joy to coach, and he will do well on the next level wherever he goes. DeAndre's coach, Kenyon Brown, was also voted District Coach of the Year. Way to go, guys. Wrestling, our wrestling athletes of the year. We have three, Jacob Seymour from South Paulding High School. <laughs> Jacob is a freshman, 120 pounds, was nominated for the winner, uh, sorry, for winter player of the year for his outstanding performance during the 2019-2020 wrestling season, as well as his accomplishments at the 2020 GHSA State Wrestling Championships. Jacob went 4-0 at the state tournament as he defeated former state champion to earn his second state championship at 120 pounds. Jacob also completed the first ever undefeated wrestling season for a South Paulding Spartan with a perfect record of 35-0. This state title accompanies his first, which he earned as a freshman last season at the 113-pound weight class. Jacob's career record is now 99-3 and as a sophomore. Jacob's coach is Aaron Huff. Way to go, Jacob. <laughs> you. Also for wrestling, we have Heaven Bird from Hiram High School. Miss Heaven is a senior at Hiram High School, and she is a two-time GHSA state champion, winning the 160-pound weight class this year. Heaven is currently ranked number 14 at 164 pounds in the country. She will be continuing her academic and athletic career at Emmanuel College, where she'll wrestle for the Lions. Heaven finished the year with a record of 25 and three and pinned her way through the GHSA state tournament this year. Heaven's coach is Ben Mount. And also for wrestling, we have Kylie Haney from Hiram High School. Miss Kylie Haney is a senior at Hiram High School. She's a three-sport athlete for the Hornets. KJ was player of the year for Paulding County in softball and is now a member of the Hornets baseball team. Miss Haney is a two-time GHSA state champion wrestler at the 
pound weight class. Kylie is currently the number two ranked wrestler in the country at a 225 pound weight class. She plans to continue her academic and athletic career at the University of Alabama, where she'll play softball for the Crimson Tide. KJ finished the season with a 30 and eight record. All eight losses were against boys in varsity matches. <laughs> KJ's coach is also Ben Mount. Way to go. Our swimming athlete of the year for boys is Logan Peak from North Paulding High School. Logan is the only Paulding County High School male swimmer to advance to state finals. He is not a year-round swimmer, which is a huge feat. He's 15th in the state with 100 in the 100 free, entered prelims as, 30, as 41st. 15th in the state, yes, sorry. 31st and in the 50 free, first alternate. He swam two state final relays, the 200 medley, 17th in the state, and 400 free relay, 17th in the state. He qualified four out of eight individual events for state and swam on two state relays. The coach's award for 12th grade for North Paulding Swimming was also one of his awards. He's the top point scorer for North Paulding Swimming. And the Wolfpack Award he was given, voted on by the swimmers, and he received it for the past three years. Way to go, Logan. There's more. Hold on. <laughs> I was, that's a lot. Okay, hold on. Logan was a senior captain this year. He was the lead point between the head coach and the captains in the team. He was willing to help all different levels of swimmers. He helped lead lanes and was a huge supporter poolside. Logan was a natural gift or has a natural gift for swimming. These days you really don't see swimmers make it to the finals if they're not year round swimmers. But Logan made it back in his 100 free and was on the cusp of making it for the 50 free. He was voted, voted Wolfpack player of the year each year he swam for North. This is a huge honor and voted on by his teammates alone. Logan is planning on swimming in college, and his coach says, I know that he will make North Paulding proud, and he will definitely be very, very missed. Logan's coach is Caitlin Woods. Way to go. <laughs> Our girls' swimming athlete of the year is Gracie Ann Byerly from North Paulding. Gracie is the only Paulding County High School female swimmer to advance to state finals and swim in the prelims in an individual event. She's 12th in the state in the 100 fly, 19th in the state for the 100 back. She qualified six out of eight individual events for state and swam on two state relays. She was the rookie of the year for North Paulding swimming, top point scorer for North Paulding swimming, on top of being an amazing swimmer, Gracie Ann is the true definition of a team player. She's always willing to help anyone. She cheers everyone on, as well as giving tips and tricks to help swimmers pick up their speed. Gracie Ann is a huge member of the team and is always an ama or she has an amazing future ahead of her. While she's only a freshman, she's a standout in Paulding County swimming. And her coach says, I predict by her senior year, she will hold many Paulding County swim records. Gracie's coach is Caitlin Woods. Let's give it up for Gracie. At this time, all of our athletes will greet the board.
Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'll move ahead to our uh, consent agenda. That's fine. Uh, as our board recalls, at our last work session, we reviewed these items. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, my recommendation will be to uh, add items A, B, C, D, E, and F to our consent agenda. Item A is our governance team recognition achievement level, which will authorize me to make application for uh, exemplary status with the Georgia School Boards Association. Item B is RFP 20-200-110 North Paulding Track Resurfacing, which would be awarded to Deluxe Athletics not to exceed $300,000. Item C is ITB 20-200-210 High Terra Radio Equipment, which this uh, invitation to bid would recognize Radio Inc. as the lowest price responsive and responsible bidder. Also, the approval of item D, which be completion certificates for Nebo, Panter, and Herschel Jones Middle School that it will allow, allow us to uh, receive the remainder dollars in capital outlay from the state. The maintenance agreement with the Board of Commissioners for the maintenance of the light located on the North Paulding campus between Burnt Hickory Elementary School and McClure Middle School would be item E, and item F would be our field trip report and I would recommend approval of those consent agenda items. Okay, here in the recommendation for the approval of the consent agenda, do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved by Ms. Lyons, second by Mr. Chester. Any questions? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes unanimously. And Mr. Chairman, if I could take a moment, I would like to recognize someone that's with us this evening. Uh, Mr. Jim Henson, who is city councilman in Dallas, is here tonight, but also many of you will know Mr. Henson as a longtime district uh, uh, employee, the person who hired me back in the day. Uh, but thank you for coming out tonight and uh, supporting the city of Dallas and our district. He also sits on the board of uh, property. Yes, planning and zoning. I was close. And he's also just uh, recognized as citizen of the year. That's right. Our Paulding County citizen of the year, which was a, a really nice event. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, moving into the action agenda, uh, first is item A, appointment of delegate and alternate to the GSBA Summer Conference. Okay, so at this point, we're going to take a, uh, a motion to, uh, or a, uh, uh, we're going to make a motion for nomination, sorry, um, for a delegate. We'll do a delegate first, and then we'll do the alternate second. Um, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we send Teresa Lyons as our delegate. So moved. So moved by Mr. Chester. Do we hear a second? No. I'll, did you make the motion? No, I'm sorry. You, you second it. I made the motion. You second it. Correct. Okay. Any questions? All right. All in favor of Ms. Lyons being our delegate, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes 5-0 with one abstention. The next will be our uh, vote for a nomination of or an alternate. Do I hear a motion? I'm or a nomination? I nominate Mr. Dean for alternate. Ms. Cobb. Second. Second. Oh. second by Mr. Chester. All in favor of Mr. Dean being the alternate, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes 5-0 with one abstention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And we'll get that information out to our delegate and alternate. Um, I did have a comment on that. For the um, delegate assembly and summer conference, I've said this before and I wanted to say it again, how important it is for you know, our district to have people attend these conferences. I also want to encourage our board um, and I know we have it built into our budget already for someone to attend the National School Board of Conference. Um, I think at this point I'm the only board member who's ever been to one, and that was a couple of years ago. And I, I, I say it for the same purposes that I say that it's a good thing to attend our state school board of con conference just to expand the experience and knowledge that a board member has. There's, in my opinion, there's not not very many times that a board member can go somewhere and talk to board members from California, New York, Chicago, and different places, and, and just compare and contrast what people are doing nationally and gain that experience. I think it's invaluable. Um, not everyone needs to go, I don't think. I mean, we could all go, but I think it, it's a, a big, it's a service to the district for at least one of us to go and have that experience. And maybe not every year, but at least, you know, one other board member be able to say that I've gone to a conference outside the state of Georgia and talk, people, talk to people who do what we do and this is what they're doing. There's such a small minority of people who run for school board and get elected and serve. So 
to have that experience I think is valuable and the National School Board conferences um, are rotated. I think it was in San Diego, then they have it on the East Coast, it's in Chicago this year. But for 2021, it's in New Orleans. Um, and you know, one of the reasons I went four years ago was because it was in Nashville, it was a driving distance. So it's not, I, I think actually, it's actually less expensive for the national conference than, than the uh, state conference. So I just wanted to, to for us to pause so I can mention that, you know, I'd strongly encourage us to, you know, to send someone or have somebody volunteer to go to, to it sounds odd to even say it, volunteer to go to New Orleans, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but because I, I, I think it is an invaluable experience. So I just wanted to make sure I put that out there. And, and, you know, now that, I mean, it's in New Orleans, it's in April, which I think falls the exact same time as our spring break. So I, I think, you know, you would get a lot of it out of it just to go. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, next item on agenda is our GSBA legislative position statements. As those of you who've been to summer conference before know that the legislative body reviews the uh, GSBA legislative positions and each board of education is asked if they have any uh, that they wish to either be deleted, additional language added to it, or amended. Um, so at this time, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and entertain a motion to approve, and then if there's anything that needs to be amended, we'll take a second and a third or a fourth, if necessary, vote to amend anything that anyone has any concerns about. Um, do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved by Mr. Chester, your second. Second by Mr. Albright, any discussion? I have one discussion item, uh, actually two, and I'll start with uh, section B, if everyone wants to pull that up. Uh, 1.B.1, section uh, selection of the Georgia Board of Education, state school superintendent. It says the GSBA supports the nonpartisan. Uh, you're going kind of fast. So I'm, I'm reading it. Do you have it pulled up? No, where's A1? It's uh, one is B, section B. 1B1. And then 1B1, I'm sorry. Okay. Everyone there? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> sorry about that. Let's scoot down here. All right, so I'll read it. It says, uh, GSBA supports the nonpartisan election by popular vote of State Board of Education members by congressional district to serve a four-year staggered term. And I'm assuming that is in lieu of the governor appointing them. They would be elected by the congressional district, which um, I'm okay with that staying. Um, but the second sentence there, the GSBA further supports the appointment of the state school superintendent by the elected State Board of Education. The first section, I'm going to make a motion to amend that, saying that we don't support the state school superintendent be elected by the board of the state board of education. That we want to continue having that person elected by the citizens of the state of Georgia. And I'll make that amendment. If I is there a second? Second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion on that amendment? Um, I I, I think I understand your purpose, but um. I don't believe that we can, and, I, and I'm not sure, I guess this is the question, can we amend these or can we just strike them all together if we don't agree with them? Ms. Cobb? In the past, um, our, I mean, it's been probably 10 years or more, I think they could actually take out one item. You would just remove that item or say you didn't agree with that item, but um, Mr. Cable might remember better than I do. Specifically remember, I know, I know you, you have sent in Position statements in the past that are not verbatim to what they had proposed, but I don't remember if you the entire position or if you made a change. And, and I believe that at the conference itself, at the delegate assembly, your delegate can um, amend on the floor. Um, and, and I'm trying to remember, because it's been a couple of years since I was on the committee that drafted these. I think there's a process for us to amend, make changes, alterations, but then once it goes back to our entire board for approval, we can approve um, approve it or strike some we didn't approve, but I think our delegate, uh, well, I believe our delegate can uh, amend at the convention and ask for a certain item to be amended or struck or do something like that in the process of the conference. So I'm not opposed to your, to your motion. I'm just not sure if that's... No, I, I believe that's what we do now. We, we make any changes we want to make, and then when we send our delegate, they argue the point that we've made here on the floor there. Okay. 
So that's that's the purpose of it. So I'm OK with the amendment being striking the second sentence that says GSBA further supports the appointment of the state school board superintendent by the elected state board of education um, and just striking that sentence altogether. So I'll restate the motion. Um, I'll withdraw the First Amendment and I'll restate it that we could strike GSBA further supports the appointment of the state school superintendent by the elected the state board of education. And I'll make that motion. Your sec second, by Mr. Dean, any discussion on that restatement? All in favor of that amendment, please show by raising your hand. All opposed, please raise your hand. Motion passes five to one. The next amendment that we need to uh, address for me is uh, 1B.2, the nonpartisan election for school board members. It says the GSBA supports legislation for calling for the nonpartisan election of a school board member. Um, I don't want to strike this, so my amendment would be that, the, that we, do, we support uh, partisan elections for local school board members, and I'll make that um, motion for that amendment. Do I hear a second? Second by Mr. Dean. Any discussion on that? Yeah, I, I would say that I don't necessarily agree with that. It's up to each community how they want to do it. I don't support anybody saying that our elections have to be partisan or nonpartisan. So I would be opposed to us telling any other community how they do their elections and anybody telling us what to do. So if, if a community decided that we want nonpartisan school board elections, so be it. If a community decides that they want partisan school board elections, so be it. So I, I don't, you know, my issue would be taking a position that tells a community, you've got to do it this way. Let them to decide. I don't believe so strongly in one way or the other that I think it's important for, for our state organization to take a position to tell other people what to do. So it would be left up to local governance to decide exactly. that. Okay. I believe that's the same thing that you're saying that it ought to be taken out for, is instead of the state saying that it will be a bipartisan, that it would be left to local. Well, that, yeah, that's exactly right, Mr. Chester. That, that is um, something that is left up to local legislation, if I'm not mistaken. But what we're doing is we're not agreeing to their specific view on this. So what we're doing is we're not changing their view. We can change that at their convention. But what we're saying is we don't agree with that statement, 1B.2, that says they support legislation calling for the nonpartisan election of local school board members. But what, so let me make sure I'm following you. You're talking about striking the word non. Is that correct? Correct. We, yes. And what I'm saying is if you're saying that you would like it to say GSA supports legislation calling for partisan election of mm -hmm. local school board members. I'm saying I would disagree with that because I don't want GSBA calling for partisan elections or nonpartisan. I don't want GSBA calling for legislation from the state to tell anybody how to do it. I so, think we just need to reword it to what we want where it, where it says left it's up left up for the local, local boards. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or either strike it all together. I don't. Yeah. I don't think taking or strike a it all to together. tell other folks what to do is something I could agree with, Mr. Albright. Okay, I'll withdraw. Just strike it. Okay, I'll withdraw the uh, the amendment and I'll I'll change it to let's uh, let's strike one dot b dot two. Second. Okay. Any any questions or comments on that? Okay. All in favor of striking that, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes six zero. And now we're back to the original. Um, approval of approving the, go ahead one more mm -hmm. item 3a1 uh, compulsory attendance they've got a clause in there that says that they want uh, to make kids accountable to 18 years of old uh, have to attend school mm -hmm. I think that's a waste of school time and money to track kids to 18 at 16 is what the age is now and I know mr. Albright argued that same point last year on the floor it's a state convention. Uh, I see no value added with the issues that we've got of trying to track kids up to 18 years old to stay in school. Could uh, say the Ed number Ed. again, Mr. Dean? 18. Excuse me? The number again? Oh, I'm sorry. 3A1. 3A1. Under attendance. Okay. And uh, to, to clarify the point, the um, uh, at last year's conference, um, the, uh, the, the, the issues that were, the issues that I raised were that uh, were primarily about uh, about daily disruptions and security issues, uh, and I, I'll echo those same those same points, but in a in an abbreviated format. But 
if you have uh, if you have a 16 year old if you have a teenager that is uh, that has decided that they no longer want to be in school albeit <coughs> it's a poor decision it's a lousy decision but that's not a decision that you know we have much control over forcing that teenager into our schools to be there uh, w number one they're going to if they don't want to be there they're going to be disruptive they're going to want to make you throw them back out again and then what if what if that escalates into violence episodes there's just there, there's no i understand the basic principle in terms of a uh, in, in terms of a uh, a, a, a liberal style philosophy in keeping the kids in school but the th things that typically don't follow that type of thinking are the consequences of those choices and the consequences of those choices could be a dramatic change and a dramatic shift in what we can do as far as our disciplinary rules and, and following discipline in our schools and creating much greater issues down the road. Um, first of all, I think it would be a truancy nightmare. Um, but second of all, I would like to hear Mr. Otot's opinion, if you would weigh in on this. Well, you know, as superintendent, our vision is to prepare all students for success today and tomorrow. Um, but that being said, there are challenges associated with, um, you know, mandating the age of 18. We are going to take every kid who comes to us and do everything we can to provide them the education they need. Um, I do know that this has also been taken up by our state legislature again in this session. Um, I don't uh, have not tracked that one to see the status of it, but as superintendent, anyone who comes, we're going to take care of. I understand. Um, but the one thing that you referenced it in terms of uh, requiring an 18 year old becomes more challenging. I'll say it that way. Ms. Cobb. And I'll add to that, not only um, can it be an issue, but if they're not gonna, if they wouldn't require it not funded, I mean, one social worker, we've got one social worker and 30,000 kids. So, you know, if they're not gonna fund 10 or 15, then that's not much we can do about that, so. And, and that won't be the case. Mr. Dean, did you wanna make an amendment I, As that, to that regard, did we strike the 18 year old, 18 age? I don't know exactly what wording we should use in there, but uh, just remain 16. Yeah, just, just drop remain at the 16. 16. Yeah. Okay. So state your state your amendment. Uh, I recommend that we leave the age at 16 on uh, item uh, 3A1. Okay. Do we hear a second to his amendment? Second. Second by Mr. Albright. Any discussion? Any further discussion? All right. Mr. Chester, are we striking it? Because it, it's already 16, so it's redundant. Doesn't remain. That's, that's why I was saying to strike it, but um, it will. We want it. Well, we would want it to remain 16. Remain. 16. Remain 16 would be the language. So we would just strike the entire amendment then. Again. Yep. Yep. I think that's the move. Yeah, that'd be yep. striking the whole amendment. All right. So for point of order, you need to withdraw your first one. Restate it. What I would like to you? withdraw my amendment and restate it as I would like to strike item 3A1. All right, do we hear a second? We do. All right, any discussion, Ms. Lyons? Yes. Please. Okay. Um, what would be the motive behind the GSBA wanting to do that? Would it have something to do with FTE, with the additional two years? I, I don't think it's FTE driven. Okay. I, I think it's, again, the desire to have 100% of kids graduate from high school. Okay. So would that be your recommendation? No. Yeah. This is this is a board I mean, this is a board decision. Board this is a board we, decision. I would like we have opinion. to tell him what to do. He can't I understand tell us that. What to do. I just would just wondered if Yeah, and I think I'd restate opinion. I think I would restate what I said earlier, which is our goal is for one hundred percent of high school kids to graduate. Um, to Mr. Albright's point, um, there are challenges associated with students who are at that point in their life where um, school may not be their path. And it does create challenges for us in terms of truancy and, and other areas. So for me, and, and I'll tell everybody this, we take them all, we want them all, we want them all to graduate. Um, ultimately, this issue is not just about the age, but also some of the uh, actual nuts and bolts associated with what they're suggesting here. Anything further? All right. 
Um, let me see a show of hands if you're in favor of the amended amendment uh, to strike it. All right. All opposed? Please raise your hand. Abstain. I'm conflicted, so abstain. Okay. Motion passes five zero. Or amendment passes five zero with one abstention. Are there any other changes or amendments that need to be made before we take the original vote? All right. All in favor of the original um, the original motion, please show by raising your hand. All opposed, please show by raising your hand. Teresa, are you abstaining from the entire vote again on this? Did you? Okay. So motion passes six zero. Last item for our action agenda this evening, Mr. Chairman, is I do request approval of personnel items one through 89. Okay, hearing the recommendation on the personnel report, do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved by Ms. Lyons, second by Mr. Albright. Any discussion? All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passes 6 0. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, at this time we'll uh, move into board member comments and we'll start down here with Mr. Dean and work our way down to Mr. Chester. Since how we got such a big audience tonight, I've only got a few things for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> Real quickly, um, we have discussed our, our janitorial. We've requested some, uh, some printouts, some survey yeah. data and stuff. And I thought we was gonna be hearing back from that, uh, especially with this new coronavirus. I'd like to get an update. I'll have that for you. Okay. And uh, sort of a follow up on the special needs overview i realize that you've just been buried this past week or so with stuff but i would like to get uh, keep focus on the special needs uh, event. And, and you're going to be hearing a lot more about that as we approach our budget i know it was mentioned last uh um, um, not come yeah yeah we'll continue provide the board updates thank you um yeah and i, I was going to mention that too as far as the reports that were asked for in january and now currently the from that point on january february march of the um custodial updates and the reports that uh, I think there was two or three different ones that were asked for. And then um, also invite everyone to the uh, Pauling Family Connection meeting, which is, um, it will actually be here this time, March 26th at 9 a.m. And um, we'll actually be putting pinwheels out front here as well as Wellstar because uh, April is Child Abuse Awareness Month. And unfortunately that, that's an issue we deal with um, as well as truancy and neglect. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just one of the ways that this group with all the, um, nonprofits and different groups in our area come together and acknowledge that we have a problem so that we can try to solve it. And sometimes our community forgets um, some of the issues we deal with, but child abuse is definitely one. So um, anybody that could come to that, I would um, greatly appreciate it. Uh, again, I just want to say uh, thank you for the, uh, um, thank you to everybody for all the kind words and everything to, to all of the board members. Uh, it uh, it is a it is a privilege and an honor to serve uh, on the board. It is uh, it it is a lot of work. It does take focus and time, uh, but it is greatly rewarding as well. And uh, and I appreciate all the uh, all the people that work uh, for and, and with the district as well. Um, the uh, had to spend some time over the weekend at Hiram High School. Uh, with their production of Shrek, and once again, uh, the uh, the Hiram High School troupe uh, knocked it out of the park again. And uh, looking forward to going to uh, to several other uh, plays that are coming up uh, by the end of the year, uh, all over the district. So if y'all get a chance to go to some of those things, go because we have some remarkably, amazingly talented kids uh, in our district. Uh, and then uh, one la one la uh, one final word on the. Uh, uh, on the uh, GSBA conference, um, I would uh, I would encourage uh, Teresa since this is your first time, and, and, and John, I know this is your second second go. You know, um, when you get there, I immerse yourself in what's there. You're only there for a few days, and for that for that few days that you're there, um, seek out as much wisdom as you can from. Uh, from the other from the other districts uh, from the other board members that are going to be there from other districts um, one of the better ways to do that is uh, there are different uh, there are different after hours meet and greets and dinners and so forth and everything where you can really go and sit down and and get to know some of these people and ask questions and everything and and really dive into some of the some of the things that 
that they're doing that we could also be doing or vice versa you know we, we're teaching you know we're helping helping them figure out the things that we're doing too so um, uh, but uh, anyway uh, I hope you guys go and enjoy I'm gonna miss going this year I always enjoy that sort of stuff I sort of geek out with a little bit uh, but uh, but you guys go and, and, and have fun with it and uh, learn everything you can learn with it I'm happy for you thank all right Dr. Otot, thank you for uh, <clears throat> putting the video together. Thank you to the staff, all of you that participated in that. And thank you guys for, and, and ladies for uh, executing all the stuff that we pass for y'all to do. So if it weren't for y'all, you know, none of the stuff would get done. And we appreciate you guys um, and what y'all do every day. And we appreciate all the teachers and staff and custodial workers, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, um, anyone that's involved in education in Paulding County, we, we, we would not be here without, without y'all and without the students. Um, and, and leading into the board appreciation, it's always fun. I don't know if you, you all see this, but every year we get cards from all the, the schools. Some of them were from kids. And um, it, one of the highlights of the year is going home after the meeting and, and, uh, and opening these up and reading them and then getting to display them in my office at work. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, or candy. So that's, that's what I like to but uh but I thank you to clarify they never have money <laughs> no no they do not they do not <laughs> so so thank you for that also um just to follow up on some survey just a question you may have answered me but just for transparency to the public um when when are we expecting the results to come out for the school calendar survey survey that we put out uh, you may have said but. we have that on the agenda for our next meeting okay all right so that's yep yeah. all right that's all i've got miss Lyon. Well, I would like to welcome Mr. Adam Clayton, our school board elect. Would you stand up? This is our new school board member for next year and two of our members that are running, um, Ms. Debbie Collette and Ms. Angela Ferris. If you, get, you would stand up, please. They're gonna be on our, uh, well, in for our next primary, so, and on to the general election. So I appreciate you guys coming and enjoying being with us today. And so I just wanted to do that so everyone could see who they were in case you didn't know them. But um, besides that, yes, it is nice to be appreciated, but I, everyone else said I appreciate you guys. Uh, the, the things that, that have been accomplished this year by the school district, when, when they presented all those, it's really overwhelming to see how much the school district has really accomplished in the last few years. And uh, my, my personal favorite is the uh, College and Career Academy. That's always my shout out. Um, but they're all wonderful, and uh, it is awesome, awesome to be a part of this this school district. It really is. Go ahead. Um, thank you gotta you. have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, I guess. Now, thank you to Dr. Otad and uh, mm -hmm. and and to everyone for uh, your appreciation. That was that was really touching. I, I, I like to uh, think that we play a super small part <laughs> in everything, and uh, and I do appreciate it. It it means a lot, especially if you've been doing this a while. You kind of you know you kind of look at stuff like that, and you say, you know what, does it even have an impact? And I'm I'm thankful that uh, to to be recognized, and um, you know I just do appreciate all the work that uh, folks do. All you know, and uh, just glad to be a par small part of it, and I'm thankful for that. And I don't know, like you said, like Miss Lyons says, we, we've got a fantastic district, the community, the people, and and they're really the they're 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 really the people that impact what goes on with our kids, and uh, you know they play a greater role than than I or we could ever play, and I'm just thankful for them and. Uh, and you know, uh, happy that you know we could play a part. You know, and uh, whenever you know, my time is done, I'm I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I and I do want to echo what Mr. Albright said as well. Um, that uh, you know, I think it's important, and I know we'll get some new members soon. That you know, there's 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 not very many people in this country that hold elected office and that serve. You know, um, I was telling someone the other day, they asked me about politics, and I told them, I don't know about politics. I'm a public servant. I'm on the school board, you know. I <laughs> said, yeah, everybody at the grocery store I run into probably voted for or against me or at least goes to school with my kids or we work. So so this, this 
is truly public service and uh, you know, I'm thankful for my colleagues that are here with me and that you know have worked with us and uh, you know I, I tell you you know to talk to people around the state and uh, that was probably you know some of the best experience of me serving is sitting in the hotel lobby and talking with a, a guy from Jackson Georgia he's passed away now but he had coached football won a state championship and uh, Somehow he and, and, the, and the way he said it, he said somehow I end up on the board of education. He's like I don't know if it's a trick or what, but, <laughs> but he talked about you know what the impact you have on the lives of so many young people at the same time, and and you know you miss it when it's when when it's gone, especially if your kids are in the system and you grow up with it, and uh, and you know I think those kind of experiences and talking to people. Is, is unique and I hope that you know I hope all of us get it you know I really do so um, so just just thankful for for you know the appreciation and all the cards and you know I just want everyone to know that it does mean a lot you know for for me and I know for all of us when we get the cards and get Christmas cards and things like that you know I go into the office and uh, I put them all on the Christmas tree and put them on and my t-shirts. yeah I mean <laughs> all of it you know and so um, so I'm thankful. I really am. And uh, I'll be quiet after that. <laughs> so just thank you. And, uh, and everyone be safe, too. That's, that's the other thing. Be safe. Godspeed. And I would like to make one, one more comment just to the public with social media being what it is. Um, you know, what Dr. Otot said earlier, I would like to mention that again. If you want factual information, please go to the district website, whether it's about coronavirus, the chain of command, um, any issues. If you if you go to social media, it actually makes it more difficult because if, if I'm on social media trying to answer you on there, that means I'm not emailing him. So if you really want to try to get a concern answered, you know, look on the website or go to your school administrator, your teacher, um, because that convolutes everything and actually slows down the process. Anyone else? All right, this time I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved by Mr. Albright, second by Ms. Cobb. All in favor, please show by raising your hand. Motion passed unanimously, meeting adjourned. <laughs>